Hi, Vale Fucci, the Headshot Doctor here. Today, I'm going to go over with you my best practices for using Photoshop's generative AI tool. So here I have some images from one of my students uh, that she did her very first uh, large off-site headshot uh, series with uh, some people at an office. And she did a great job there uh, for her first time out doing with this here, some really great work. But what ended up happening is that with it, you have a fair bit of people who either a wore some necklaces that when it happens that it might not necessarily be even some of them that where you crop with it that it ends up going off of the screen there or that you might have done just a little too tight a crop where we missed a bit of the top of the head so and uh, with it some of the people are a bit lower in the frame in that and ideally when you're doing an office shoot like that you want to make sure that everybody is going to be about the same size in the frame so the best way to do that is that you do that on a tripod, you're staying at the same distance from your subject each time and they have a mark that they're standing on. But if for some reason, you know, you happen to move in, you inadvertently zoomed in more uh, or zoomed out during the session, this type of thing can happen. But now we have a very easy solution as to how to fix this. Uh, it's with the AI generative fill. So let's go into Photoshop and see how we can quickly and easily fix this. All right, so let's start with this first image here. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to go into my crop tool in this case. I'm going to make it be my original ratio so things stay consistent here to what we were originally shooting for everybody. I'm going to lift this up just a bit and bring this down just a bit so that we get it to where it would probably be of a natural bit of having that bit of necklace come in there and then I have the option of I could just hit enter and be done with it but here if you wanted to you could add something in of what to generate but I find frankly that leaving this blank is a good first step so I'm just going to go ahead and hit generate I just want to try to figure out what it should put in that extra space there and by default it's going to give me three different options all right so we can see it's done a nice job in this one of giving her hair on top. Let's see the next version here. What that looks like, oh, kind of completed the necklace there. And there, completed the necklace in a little different way, different style with the hair. So this way I would say is the least useful, kind of strange there. So I'm just going to trash that version right off the bat there. I can see here, like I said, did a good job of adding in that background there, changing things up a bit there. I'm going to look between the two. And I'll see which I generally like better. Now say that what it generated wasn't to my liking. I can always just go in and hit generate again and see, and it'll go to it and make a new version for me. Okay, here it's given us a necklace kind of pendant there different ending and a different spot. So in the end, I think that probably between this or this, probably this is the one that looks the most convincing to me, at least with the necklace and the overall part there. So I'm going to work with that and I'm going to go layer, flatten. Now, it didn't do the best job of generating this part down here. So you could just leave it empty and see what it would do. And let's do that just for the sake of it. Mostly, I probably would have put in as a prompt hair for it. But let's just see. Right. It even right on its own figured out that we needed some hair there. It figured that out great. With that overall, I'd say that last one looks the most convincing. But if I'd wanted to, and I wanted to have the prompt in there, I literally could type in hair. We can see with it what it'll generate. I'd say seven times out of 10, it'll give you what you're looking for. And three out of 10, it'll give you something really, really strange. Like it'll all of a sudden throw in a bow. Or the other day I had one, it literally threw in a little tiny red balloon. I have no idea why. Uh, but so now you can see all these different versions that it has come up with. And you can see, just what you feel looks the best with it. What's the most realistic there? So to my eye, I 
would say that probably somewhere here or here is best. That probably looks the best to me. All right, so I'll go layer, flatten, okay. And then in this, so that this doesn't have this odd curve, I'll go to layer, filter, and I'll go to liquify. Make my brush smaller I'm using the brackets, the left bracket. And now I can go in here, get my brush a little smaller, have it on this first tool here, the forward warp, and I just kind of push it so that it goes where I want it to. Make my brush a little bigger. To kind of move this outward. Just move that a little bit. So that the break of that necklace looks right. And I'm actually going to bring it up just a little bit so it's not drawing your eye to the absolute bottom of the shot there. Okay. So now it gets it there. It gets the general idea of what I might want. If I want, I can even take it and just select the necklace. If I say I found that to be just too distracting, I'm going to select around it using my polygonal lasso tool. Do, do, do. Coming in and around. Getting close to it, but leaving a bit of skin and other material in and around it. Again, I'm going to actually leave the prompt blank here. I click on generative fill, leave the prompt blank, hit generate. And it figured out that yes, what I found that was the problem was the necklace. But that was the distracting part. So now I can look and see the different versions that it did. The only little differences are the little tiny bits of shading here and there. So I'm just going to look and see which looks the most natural to me. I think that feels about right. So we can see it with the necklace. And you can see how it's kind of distracting having the brightness to catch right there or without, how it focuses on her face more. So I would leave it, in this case, without. So let's go Layer, Flatten Image, and Save. Okay, here's another one from there. Let's see, oh, another matte necklace, let's see. So let's do the steps again. I'm gonna go click on my Crop Tool. In this case, she's got some space above her head, but we wanna have a little bit more space below. So the crop isn't quite as tight. Okay, I'm just going to hit Generate. All right, so there it gave her a lot more necklace, a little bit, and some. So here I'd say this is going to be the one that I would find would probably be easiest to get rid of because it was skinniest and it gave me that other material underneath there. That'd be a little harder. Okay, could also just try generating one more time, see if we get anything else that is going to be a little less of the necklace even more so. Okay, you can see there, looking pretty good with that overall. And then I actually like that bit there. So in case she wanted to have with her necklace there, I might actually go layer, flatten, and actually make it so that we make this even just a bit bigger and see if it'll be smart and give me the ending of a necklace. Let's see. there. It's just kind of extending it. So if you want a version with having a necklace, that could work there. So first you could go ahead and hit filter and sorry and layer flatten image and you could save that as is. Then save as and we're going to do a version with no necklace. No necklace. Okay. 
So I'm going to go to my favorite polygonal lasso tool. It's my easiest thing to select this. I'm just going to select around by clicking points and just generally get the area where the necklace is. Okay, gyro fill. And once again, I'm not giving it a prompt. If I gave it a prompt of just like shirt, let's do that because we're mostly needing shirt. We'll see if it gives us something wacky or not. <laughs> yep, see, even though I put shirt, <laughs> we've now got some very interesting bands here. Now, if I just take that out entirely and make it a blank prompt and hit generate, let's see what it does. Okay, first one's a bit wacky, but sure enough, by the second and third iteration, it's done a pretty stellar job here. So there, now we have none of that. Now the neck is still a little bit funky here, but I can work with that. So at this point I'm happy with it. I'm gonna flatten my image. And now I'm just gonna go into this section around here. Click generative fill and go for it. Perfect, we can see these different options between them for what looks the most natural. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Flare, flatten, save. And that's how I do that. Let's also work on this one. Okay, so if I bring this over to Photoshop, <coughs> So another way we can use it, first we're just going to add getting that little bit more space above her head so it doesn't feel like it's quite so tight. I'll generate. Okay. See that top of the head there, what looks most natural. See what was there before. Let's see. So there wasn't actually too much hair there at all. So I can actually go and change that mask and bring back where it was. And I make sure this is on black. Click on the mask portion. I'm going to paint that out that little bit here. Making sure my opacity is at 100%. Don't worry that I've got that bit of space there right now. It will get addressed in just a moment. I want that natural top of her hair there. Okay, so that seems all right. I'm gonna flatten that. And then I'm gonna go in and just select only the little bits that I want changed now. Before when I expanded that, it was using what it decided would be the right edges to regenerate. This is limiting it just to the area that I have selected to change. Okay, that looks pretty good. Flatten. Next is to use it for hair here. So you can see how you have this piece kind of jutting out and you have some bits that are coming out on the edges, kind of flyaways. So what I can do, depending on however I want to make this look, I can just kind of select the parts that are a little problematic and the little spots of flyaways. And I'm just gonna type in hair generate. See what it comes up with for us. Okay. Convey some. It's really adding a lot. There. That looks pretty convincing there. And we want it to still look real. We don't want it to look like helmet hair of just at this line. You want it to still have some of that matching bit of texture and stuff like that to the hair. So you can see before to after how that really works well with it. And I think that looks the best there. I'll flatten that and do the same thing. I can do that for this hair on this forehead here. In this general area, take my selection tool. I'm gonna get the area that's got this piece going onto the forehead and into a little bit of the hair. And this time I'm just gonna hit generate. I'm not even gonna say hair or skin or anything. Just see what it comes up with first. Okay, 
I can always toggle this on and off by clicking on the eye to see the difference. There's there. There's that version. So I can see before, after. We still want it to look authentically her. That's probably the closest, but let's hit generate one more time to see if it gets us something any better. Okay. Let's see there to here. Oh, that looks really good now. Okay, I'm glad we did that other iteration because these options are much better. Much more realistic looking. Okay, I think that looks great. Layer. Flatten. Good, and I hit save. So that's the basics of using generative AI fill for headshots. It is a tremendously helpful and useful tool that I hope you will find helpful for you in the future. Now, when in doubt, it's always best to just remind people not to wear necklaces in general and to keep it simple like that and also to do your best to get it right in camera right when you're shooting. But if you don't, know that you can go and rescue it in using Photoshop's generative AI tool.